Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Satisfactory. As in the last episode, we got our coal power online. Since then, I've actually added one more coal plant, just because. We have plenty of coal going on right now, and we want all of this capacity available. And looks like our water is keeping up, especially considering I did plug in the other water pipe there, or the, the other water pump back at the lake. What I have actually done is now that we have secured power, and this power doesn't require me to constantly go back and refuel it manually, I was able to leave the game running. So I left the game running overnight and allowed it to construct a bunch of stuff including a whole bunch of smart plating which the current space elevator needed 500 i've already sent those up well sent them up i needed some other things before i can send that up but i've already put the 500 in there and i have spares just in case they need them in the future other than that i'm just trying to stockpile some rotors and reinforced plates here but when it comes to things such as the research there is seemingly a large need for rotors. So I think today we are going to set up a, another rotor factory. Oh, look at all these modular frames. This is amazing. So we can go take a look at the research. I have actually made the research for vehicles. As you can see, there's a tractor right there. So we'll be able to use cars now, as you can see, transportation. Tractors and truck stations. So exciting. But let's go take a look as basic steel production is just a few rotors away. Boom. How did that what did that give us? Steel production unlocked. Foundry grants access to new simple steel parts. An additional Foundry. project part can now be constructed. Progress to the next phase is now possible. Smelts two resources into alloys and be automated by feeding ore into a conveyor belt connected to the inputs. Produced inputs can be automatically extracted. So, alloys. I'm guessing that we're going to have to do an alloy of, say, copper and iron. Steel pipes. Uh, or, mm, what it probably is going to be is it's going to be iron and coal, right? I would think. Oh, and I can just get a Xenobasher, heavy electric shock self-defense. I just have enough for that, why not? It only cost me 25 of my rotors and I have 90 of them, uh, but it's gonna re return in seven minutes, so I can get that later. Other than that, we're just continuing with analysis here. Extended. Has been expanded. Yeah. Hell yes. Put that in there. Get that into my inventory as well. Uh, we, we're starting to have some of the materials we need to do some of this research. Uh, that just takes flower petals. Frick, we have a ton of those. Flower petals. Start your research. It just take three seconds. Easy peasy. And alien organisms. Hey, with just some screws, we can get the rebar gun? Hell yeah! Uh, I believe this container here is still screws. Yep. Uh, alien organisms. Here we go. Start that research. Five minutes, and I can get a gun. Oh, that'll be so nice to be able to shoot some of these aliens from a distance instead of having to go and punch them with this little piece of crap here. But while we will have to set up a foundry and figure out how to use that, as we got two inputs and one output here, and steel is coal and iron at 45 a minute, 
We're not ready for that yet. Our coal is entirely for our power generation at this moment. We're going to have to find another coal node in order to get this working. But for now, what we can do is grab some of this fuel here and stick it into our tractor. We have a vehicle. Stick it in there, 200. It even has a crafting bench on it, so as long as you have some basic materials, you can uh, craft your stuff out in the, in the wild. But it's a nice little vehicle. And it is surprisingly, like, untippable. Like, it just snaps back down to the ground. It's definitely a very gamey way of driving, but hey, it works. So, you can see I've already placed a cargo container out here, as I am going to want to expand the factory over here. Uh, probably not the same piece of ground that the factory is on, the same plate, uh, but we have... Oh, uh, clean that up. That wasn't there. I was experimenting around seeing what fit over here before I started recording. We have three normal nodes of iron. So this is 60 a minute with my normal um, extractors. So I can have a total of 60, 120, and this would be 180 iron per minute here. And it just so happens, I've done the math on it. I could have two assemblers all set up here that are running for rotors and each assembler running for rotors at 100% requires half of the iron that's available here. So I can have two rotors, two rotor assemblers running at 100% here based on these nodes. And I can just get a bunch of rotors. Which, hey, that's helpful. So I figure, let's set up a big rotor factory today. And we'll plop down a lookout tower so I can see everything from above. And let's get to building out the foundations. So, should be right over there in the center of that one. And they should snap quite nicely together. God, I love how easy it is to build these foundations. Oh, we need to get a little bit closer. Come on. Oh, no, I just need concrete. Well, thank that I th thought about this ahead of time. As look at that, there's a whole bunch of concrete and stuff here. It's like almost I planned the episode out instead of just randomly recording and doing whatever the thought hell I thought would be interesting. Excellent, and we can fill in this whole shebang here. Because why not? Concrete is free, and it is very abundant. And then, we can get our three miners. Excellent! And just give me a little bit more room here to work with. So, running the numbers, I'm going to out of my tower now that everything is uh, all initially placed. <gasps> what is this? You guys are not aligned. Minor, oh my god, this entire section is wrong. You're supposed to be aligned with that part of the base. God damn. Silly things. At least it's easily deconstructed and reconstructed. So, based on my calculations, what we need to do is all of these are going to be turning into rods because a rotor needs rods and screws, but screws are made from rods. So everything gets turned into rods in the end. So we'll just make a bunch of rods. Ugh, already had a concrete again. 
God damn, we go through it fast. But that is why I prepared a whole bunch of it. Okay, dokie. So, to start off, these are coming out at 60 per minute out of these uh, these miners. Because of that, we're going to need to split them before we get uh, them going into any smelteries. Because the smelteries can only handle 30 per minute. So a quick splitter beforehand will fix that issue. And also a quick... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to miss the jump. Damn it. I wanted to grab that uh, the green guy there and put a power pole where he was. Oh god, am I going to miss the jump again? I so totally did. I tried to do a slide jump, but then I just screwed it up. Okay, third time is the charm. We'll come at it from a good angle here. There we go. Hello, power slug. Gotcha. So then power line, power pole, right there. This is coming from the base back here. And then we'll put it into a power line down over here. And that'll be my input line for the base. Wonderful. So, we need splitters. From here, logistics, splitters, and coming out of this thing, we're all split. And split. And uh, I'm going to weave this thing back, back to here. Just so that we get this thing all... Ah, should I? No, I'm going to keep them a little bit separate. This will be fine. This will be over here. Split. We've got to mark one belts because they can do 60. And they'll just go into these things directly. And then, first up, smelters. So right off of it here, we'll just do nice and tight in there. One, two, that is centered. That looks like it's centered. You are going into there on iron, iron. And you will be coming out into there. So that is the first one being smelted. And also, power pole. Excellent. Now, the next one can grab the same smeltery setup here. We can just all align these. One, and actually we'll put it right in between these two. Two. Because we're kind of doing sort of a four and two setup. What I need in the end, if we think about it, a assembler to make rotors is going to need 20 per minute of rods and 100 per minute for screws. So that means because I'm doubling this, I'm going to have two assemblers at 100%. I'm going to need 40 rods and 200 screws. But however, screws are rods. They just need to be uh, built that way. So in a constructor, to make not copper, uh, screws, we need 10 rods to make 40. Remember, I need four. I need 200. Divide by 40 means I need five constructors making screws. Which means then 10 per minute for each one. I need 50 income. Uh, like 50 iron rods going into five different constructors to make screws. But then I also just need 40 rods to go into the assemblers as well. So in total, 90 rods, which is six of these constructors on rods, because 90, uh, 15 divided by 90 is six. So that means every single one of these perfectly will be on a constructor into rods, but then we're going to have to do some load balancing 
because two of these over here is going to be 30, but I'm going to need to add in 10 more to them. Once I add in 10 more, then it'll be at the 40 rods, which then I'll split for the 20 rods each. So this setup over here is going to be for pure rods. This setup over here is going to be for screws. So let's get the smeltery down here. Uh, sure, you can be right beside it. Because why not? And we'll get this all powered up. Slap down a pole there. You can never add too many power poles. And we'll just continue the uh, power line of these on their own, separate from the uh, the excess power line that's going to the things here. Okay, good. So set these all up with iron. No, copper. There we go. You are on iron as well, and you are on iron. You can get these belted in. Oh no, I need iron rods. Well, what do you know? I have some of those in my storage container. It's almost like I planned this. Uh, this was me setting everything up beforehand. Making sure I'm not dilly-dallying and doing dumb things during these episodes. And in. Okay. So. Every single one of these is going to go out to a constructor. And every single one is going to be a screw constructor. So no specialties here. Just pound out four constructors there. These guys are all going to go into the screws and set them up to screws. No wait, not screws. Rods. My mistake. We need to first make them into rods. Then the ones on these sides will go into another constructor set, which will be screw screws. Ah, brain not functioning. Uh, what power pole on the other side? Woohoo! And expand the platform. Da, 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 da. There we go. And we'll plop down another power pole right here. And right here. Get these two wired up. And the next pole. And then this guy can go up to there. There! And everyone should be making lots. So we're getting 30 rods, 60 rods, and then we'll copy that right here. Uh, get that one done first, and then get this one done. Plop down the pole, power it all up, and connect it back to there. Okay. So, is that where I want to connect it? Or I could connect it to this thing. Yeah, I'll leave a, uh, a connection available right there off this bolt. So that way I can run the uh, other assemblers off of there. So these guys here are just going to stay as iron rods. Because we're going to need 40 rods. However, we're only making 30 on this side. So I need to load balance and send some rods over. However, I need to do a little bit of load balancing math in order to get that done. And I don't need this entire section. There we go. Uh, I don't need it, but it looks better when it's there. It looks better when it's there. I'll leave it. So. 15, 15 for 30. This guy right here needs to give me 10. To do that, we're going to need to do some merging and splitting. So first off, we are going to merge. And we're going to merge two of these lines together. 
gonna take this one from here, and this one from here, into a 30 line. And then we will split the 30 into three, giving us three runs of 10. This run of 10 is gonna head over this direction. Uh, we won't need, need to run it yet, but it will go into a merger right here. Okay, that is not what I meant to do. That is what I meant to do. So we have a line of 15, a line of 15 for a line of 30, plus a line of 10 coming out of this one. Uh, right now it won't be 10 because it's getting the whole thing, but once I get these other two on, it'll be 10. Then I can grab another merger and merge these two back together. And now we have a line of Okay. Oof, I can stand on this thing. 15 and 15 into a line of 30, into three lines of 10, with 10 going to meet that 30, so a line of 40. That takes care of the rods. This is, this is fine. Now this line of 20 will combine with these guys on a line of 30 to make a line of 50. Ha! <laughs> ha! Which will then go into our five constructors making screws. Oh my god, I'm, I am I am impressed on how well I'm doing in this game. I am learning so much. And while... That, oh, it's, that's just beautiful now. Then here, we can have an output going that way to have this go into... Hmm? Oh, that's the output. Never mind. Wrong direction. Oh, because that's an input on this side. Oh, I need to rotate this. That's what's wrong. I need an output there. There we go. Now, then, God damn it, I did it again. There and there. Now, these 20 go into here, and these 30 go to there, and then we got 50 coming out right here. Wonderful. We'll extend out the platforms a bit more. Plenty of room here. No need to worry. And also, looks like we are oh, pretty much aligned with our old thing here. Uh, I don't think I need this many iron rods. Eh, well, whatever. We get rid of them. And we'll take this down. Oh, are these all containers? Because they got a little bit of... Ah, uh, they do. Okay, that's fine. I just need to place a few more foundations and I can pick those up. There we go. That should be more than enough. Excellent. Okay. So now, we need six constructors running off of these 50 rods per minute. Not six constructors, five constructors. And we'll do them with the manifold design. As I don't want to load balance a 50 input. That just seems annoying. I could theoretically merge. Okay, what I could do is I could load balance this. Uh, I may want to try that though. I don't want to run all the cables for it though. I just want to do a manifold. It'll it'll we're end up working out in the just fine in the future uh, because I already have ten and ten. So then I just need to split this merger into three lines as well, and then I'll have five lines of ten, and then it'll be properly load balanced. I could just do that. I could just load balance it that way. Ah, oh, let's do it that way. It's a little bit easier. Okay. 
So. What that would mean is we could do a constructor directly here. One, two, three. Uh, sure, we can have a constructor halfway into the, the rock here. It doesn't mind. Four, and then the fifth constructor right here. So let's load balance this in. Um, you. Yeah, let's, let's rebalance all this stuff. I need to probably get rid of some of these things just so I have a bit more room in my inventory when I'm picking all this stuff up. Okay, we still need to merge these. This is 100%. But just the output's going to go this way. And then the splitter will be here. With one to there, one to there. Okay, that's good. That's merging. This is going into there. And you are going into there. Okay, so that's resetting, getting that. It's 10 that it needs. But now we're going 10 into there, 10 into there. We're merging these two, and then we'll split right here. And then we'll go 10 into there, 10 into there, and 10 into there. Okay, so this is all properly load balanced. And then we'll hit them with screws. 10 per minute for each one. Absolutely wonderful here. Beam, get more power lines, power poles. Ba -ba -ba. Might as well get lots of power stuff going on here. Next pole we can put right there. And connect in. And then the next pole we'll put right there, and that'll be for our two assemblers. Okay. So now we just need two assemblers. We're going to have a crap ton of screws coming out of here. Specifically, they're going to be in stacks of 40 per thing. So we need 100 for each, which will be splitting the middle one. Because it's going to be 40, 80, 120. So we need to take this middle 40 and split 20 to each side. Like so. And then we'll get a merger on each side as well. We'll have Mark 1 belts coming in because this is still just uh, 40 per minute. But when we get to the merged section, it'll be 100 per minute, which I will need additional uh, belt speed. So I'll have to use a Mark II belt here. Right here. Oh, anyway, right here. So this is going to be a 100 per minute. This is going to be 100 per minute. Excellent. Okay. So now I can slap down where the assemblers are going to be, which I'm thinking will be back in this corner here. Uh, I am going to plop myself down a lookout tower. So I can... I'll probably just leave this lookout here, tower here as well. But I'll, I can see what is going on from up on high, which is always useful. Okay. And I haven't selected those to be screws yet, but I'll do that in a moment. So these two lines, this is going to curve this way and go into one. This is going to curve this way and then come back and go into one. So they want to be right around here. So I'm thinking the assemblers are going to be 
there and there. Mm-hmm. That looks good. Because then easy conveyor belt into this side with a with a sp a splitter. And then an easy conveyor belts from this side. Okay, let's go get these belts done. Whee! And you guys need to be set as screws. Oh wait, you have no power. Why don't you have power? I thought I... Did I not connect you to a line? Oh, I didn't connect you to a line. <gasps> oh, okay. I need a line here. My mistake. Okay, now they're all online. Now are y'all making screws? Uh, it would actually be helpful if they got uh, any input. <laughs> that would be very useful. Okay. Now they're, they're working properly. Okay. So, from here, this input is going to be a Mark II belt, because it's going to be 100 per minute. So we'll take the Mark II belt out, and we'll do a 90 degree turn here, but I think I might stack my belts. Because it's going to look cool. Uh, too steep. That's okay. We can do the stackable here. And um, that's Mark 1. I need Mark 2. Excellent. And you will just go along uh, the ground. That's a little too far. Is that the same distance? Probably was. And you'll come along here while you come along above it. Ho oh, oh, ho oh, oh. ho! Excellent! Plenty of screws. There's two 100 lines of screws. So then you will come... Uh, let's get rid of that pole there. Can I place this? Yeah, right there. It'll make a 90 degree turn. Actually, do I need a full 90? Or do I just need to weave it in? Yeah, let's go for the, um... Let's go for this thing here. Mark 2. Conveyor belt mark 1. No, 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 this needs to be mark 2. Mark 2. There we go. Must make sure that is Mark II. Take the 90 degree and line it up and send it in. Okay, so that's one of the uh, things. Now we just need to do that with the upper one, with the stackables. And drop it down from the top there. Once it gets over to uh, uh, right about, yeah, let's see, there. Then it goes down. I think that works. Yeah. That's easy. Or actually, I can make this really easy on myself, considering that my... Yeah, I should definitely do this differently. I can make this real easy on myself by having this line here go into this side. By just weaving it this way a little bit. Oh, 
Come on. I want to have this a nice, relatively even little jog here. Oh, it's not going to do it. No. Okay, fine. Fine. We'll just go like to here and then straighten it out and then go straight in. That's will be the best I can get. But because this is elevated, going into this side, then there's plenty of room for me to just run normal Mark 1s from here. And I can run it off of a splitter, which will align right there. And I believe, yes, there's enough room for me to run a Mark 1 underneath here. Okay, so, in recap, because this was a pretty cool build, and I'm really enjoying it here, we can then set these to rotors, rotor, plop down a power pole, and where is the, that guy was ready to, actually, I don't need to plop down a power pole, this guy's ready to just be all my power, my final bits of power here, wonderful, okay, let's go and recap it. This is a nice little plant that I have going here. So we had three normal iron nodes. One, two, and three. With Mark I extractors on them, they're making 60 each, which each gets split off into two different smelters. Then, each of those is making iron rods. However, we need to load balance a little bit, so we're taking... Uh, 10 rods from this side and splitting it out first getting 15 from these ones into a 30 line then splitting that 30 line into three tens sending a 10 over in this direction getting ourselves the 15s from here into a 40 line splitting the 40 into 20 and 20 which is what these assemblers need splitting the rest of these lines here with 10 10 and 10 10 and 10 into five screw constructors which then create 200 screws per minute which then have using mark ii belts to uh delivering a 100 screws to each one by doing a merge and a split i am actually really happy with this build like this is beautiful and I, I can just leave this thing. Like, it's using these iron nodes as efficiently as I can. Like, this is perfectly load balanced, this entire factory. If I remove the, uh, the backlog that got built up in the smelteries and such while I was designing the rest of it, then everything would just flow in this factory. Uh, the last thing I need to do is just plop down a couple storage containers or even just run the... Uh, a line back to the base with uh, the results from these guys. But yeah, I think I'll just prop down a, a couple storage containers and just let these fill up. And there we go. We've got a bunch more rotors. That was surprisingly easy compared to the first time I made this. Because I know what the hell I'm doing now. But we have vehicles now. So if I wanted to, I could go off on some expeditions here. As there is like more iron up there. So there's two more iron nodes there. There is iron 292 meters there. I could go and start setting up these little factories around the world, wire them all back to my main base, and just keep upgrading my coal production. Which, speaking of coal, I know there's the one this way. Yep, 633. But there's also coal that direction, and coal that direction. I'm contemplating loading up my tractor here with a whole bunch of resources 
going out because I've looked at online maps of this game because I, I know it's the, the, the same game world for everybody. So I've looked at the maps and saw that, oh, wow, there's a whole bunch of coal in this one section. What I could do is I could go out there with a bunch of resources. I could set up a giant factory of like a giant power plant and then just run a power cable all the way back to here and just leave it, leave it running out there. Just load balance it and then just leave it. And then I just have that extra power production. But yeah. We've done it. We've created more rotors. Nicely balanced factory. So then we'll just slap down a little bit more foundation here. And uh, uh, what was it? Organization? Yeah. We'll get a storage container for each of these with just a Mark 1 conveyor coming out of it. And there we go. Pure rotors, man. Oh, yeah. Give me those rotors. Oh, yeah, baby. I want them all. I want all these rotors. But now I can go and use these rotors. And I can put them towards my various research and such that I need to do. As for example, improved melee combat there needs rotors. So we should be able to go and dash on over to uh, the map here, whatever this thing is, the hub, and go plug it in and go get those uh, improved melee combat. Quite, quite easy actually. I can really tell when you're, like, after you've been playing this game for a while, things are going to scale up fast. Like, just the amount of stuff you can build per minute is just going to start to explode. So here we need wires, which I need a little bit more, cables, which I need a little bit more, but what do you know? There's wires and cables right here from uh, my leftovers. Hence why I left them here. Oh god, I don't need that many. Just give me a few. And you'll take a few hundred. And before, when I was like, oh my god, I don't have enough of these reinforced iron plates. Now nah, I just be like, yeah, whatever. Here, take 50. Ah, I don't care. Oh! Milestone reached. R&D inflated your pocket dimension, added an additional hand equipment slot, and have provided an improved Xeno Woo! Zapper with increased strength and range. Xeno! I need two zappers. So I can make one more zapper, and then I can take off the current zapper, and then I can make a Xeno Basher! Oh, ooh, ooh, that thing looks frightening. Oh, oh yeah, baby. Oh, I'm gonna go on a killing spree with this thing. That is excellent. What do you think, Fred? I think he likes it. And rebar gun is complete. <gasps> I was in alien organisms. You get the spiked rebars. <laughs> Rebar gun, what do you need? Come on, get out of my way. We need screws. What do you know? There's some screws right here. <laughs> I actually am enjoying having these little bits of uh, resources still laying around here. It's been making my life pretty easy. Oh, no, wait, I'm researching construction. Rebar gun! Yes! Got it. Oh, yeah, baby. I am 
fully equipped here, man. I got my basher, my gun, which I'm gonna need ammo for, my chainsaw, and my scanner. This, this is great. And then I can just make some spiked rebar. I'm assuming I can automate that. Wait, is it an instant structure? Is that a thing? Oh, it can be. Nice. How many per minute? 15 per minute. Okay. So I can turn essentially an uh, iron node somewhere into just making me ammo. Now, are these individual shots here? I'm assuming. So 50 shots? Oh, I need to reload one per thing. Oh. Oh, it's a one shot. But hey, it is better than nothing if it's a ranged weapon. Uh, it's 50 per stack. Okay, so let's just go with, I guess, two stacks of ammo right now. We'll get 100 rounds. I'm so excited. I'm going to go off and I'm going to go and do a giant expedition make myself a bunch of beacons as well because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I can take those beacons and place them down and then enter a name and then it becomes a beacon test. Perfect! And then can I pick it up? Yes I can. Oh, perfect! So I can go around, I can get into my little truck, I can drive around the world, I can slap down some beacons, and I can name them basically what the resources I find there. And then I can go and plan out where I want to build stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, we're getting equipped. This is, this is great. And all the time, uh, what are these, a stack? 10? No, how, how many is a full stack of these? I don't have plate. Uh, plate should be in this thing. Plate? Hey, plate. Alright, now you're done. You are empty. How many is a full stack of beacons? I wonder. Wow, can it fit over 20 in a stack? Uh, maybe it's a stack of 50, just like the ammo? Let's see. Wow, I can you can fit over a stack of 50 in these beacons. Oh, I don't need more than 50 beacons, that's for sure. Uh, advanced steel. Yeah, we don't have the stuff for that yet. We got some of it, but not everything. Yeah, we definitely don't have the stuff for that. So it looks like advanced steel is the next thing. Which we can get those done. We can get you guys done. under that we gotta get 150 but hey we just made a factory to make more of these it's like I knew what I was doing and then the next thing is steel so we need coal like that is the if ands are no like no if ands or buts we need more coal because we're gonna need to make steel so I need to go out and explore. We need to go somewhere with coal resources and iron resources and create a steel factory there. And then get enough steel that we can send it up into the space elevator. But that is going to be for another episode as we have gone on long enough, but we have done some good stuff here. We have created a giant rotor factory, and oh, we also have some rotors here. How wonderful. That's gonna be it. Oh god, look at it, it's so beautiful from over here. Let's go take it one last peek. But that is going to be it. Thank you for watching, and good hunting out there, fellow pioneers.